Okay, this is Michael Pepper for MMABay.co.uk in association with Tap Out uh, with Ultimate Fighter Season 9 winner Ross Pearson. Thanks for joining us, Ross. Yeah, man. Thanks for calling, man. So, first off, um, you're going to be fighting later this month against Dennis Seaver at UFC Fight Night 21. How yep. are you feeling your camp's gone in the run up to this one? Uh, yeah, my camp's gone great. Uh, it's been another fantastic camp and uh, I'm progressing on great. You know, I'm feeling safe strong um, technique wise it's just improving to another level uh, and I'm I'm feeling like three weeks feels like three years I'm just dying to get in there and fight now ok like I said you're going to be fighting Dennis Seaver what sort of problems do you see him posing for you on the night and have you been working on anything special <laughs> yeah I mean Dennis is, uh, is very explosive uh, he's got one punch one kick power knockout uh, so he's always dangerous and uh, he's got a, a lot of a, a lot of good stand-up skills with uh, he's spinning back kicks, uh, he's good at good head kicking, and he's really fast and powerful. So he, he causes a lot of problems, you know. Uh, I've always got, I've, I think I'm always going to have to be. I can't slip out of concentration at any time because he's just that super explosive and powerful. Uh, if he catches you with one of them shots, I mean it's a good night. You're going out. So basically, I'm just going to have to be super focused, uh, keep the fight at my pace. Uh, they dictate the fight in all areas, you know, take it the fight where I want to take it, and I think I'll be able to use a more wider wider range of fighting styles than just kickboxing to win this fight. Okay, Dennis's last fight, he defeated another British fighter, Paul Kelly. Have you had the chance to study that fight, and have you spotted any holes in his game that you can exploit? Yeah, I mean, I've watched, I watched that fight before I was getting warmed up for Riley but obviously I wasn't paying too much in interest because I was focusing on my fight but uh, I've watched it back and uh, yeah you know Paul Paul done a lot of good things you know I think Paul had that Paul could have won that fight uh, he, he just he, he just rushed in a little bit too much uh, and you know he, he knows the mistakes that he done in that fight and I'm sure that if he fought him again I think he'd probably beat him but Dennis is good at being able to dictate the pace being able to put an opponent where he wants to put the oppo- his opponent so you know uh, the things that I've been working on is just make the fight my fight do the things that I want to do not make sure he's doing what he wants to do take all that away from him and I'm just going to mix it up you know I'm just going to have fun go out there and do what I do every day in the gym uh, I think if I if I mix it up and keep guessing uh, and not just make it into a kickboxing fight uh, I think I'll be too much for him I think my style I'll just overwhelm his style, so basically that's the game plan we're going for, just to mix it up. Okay, Team Roughhouse has obviously exploded in the last couple of years. A lot of it's been down to you know guys coming through the Ultimate Fighter. You've now got Paul Semtex Daly and Dan Hardy, well established in the UFC. What do you yep. put it down to? Uh, I just put it down to all the hard work that we do. Uh, obviously, we only get the squad trains on your Tuesdays and Thursdays, but. We all got our own strength and conditioning coach, jiu-jitsu coach, boxing coach, Thai boxing coaches, and then when we come together, you know, we're just one big family, you know, we just bar and help each other along. When everyone's fighting, everyone's there helping each other out, and uh, I just feel like, we're, like you say, we're a family, we're all there for each other. I mean, I do anything for the lads down in the rough house, and the staff to fill us, they do the same for me, uh, and we just... We've just gone from strength to strength over the last few years of just fighting and competing and obviously getting better in a group is making it is getting a more notice when each individual fights. Okay, one of the, one of your teammates in particular, Dan Hardy's got a big match coming up. Um yeah. how's he been looking in training and, and what do you think he's gonna do against George St. Pierre? Uh, you know, Dan's super clever about his training, uh, and he's looking super sharp right now. Uh, he's He's boxing, his footwork, and his takedown defense is coming on really, really well. He's uh, he's he's super sharp, super fit. Uh, his training camp's gone perfect. You know, he's uh, he's 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 super confident in his own ability, Dan, and he believes in himself, which will always make him for a dangerous fighter. You know, uh, I believe that Dan's obviously looking for that punch what he's keep talking about, and I think he just needs to go in there and just have fun with it and let his, his He's obviously going to be the underdog in this fight. To be said, no, no pressure on him. Just go out there and just have fun with it and let his hands go. And you never know. Like, like look at the Matt Terra fight. Everyone 
Matteo Rossi against George Saint the end. Cliff G S P and then he finished the fight. Now Dan's got that. Dan's got that danger about him as well. I feel Dan is a better fighter than Matt Matt Sarah. And I feel that if Dan does catch G S P I think he could in the Okay, rewind five months. Uh, you actually made your own um, UFC debut uh, yeah. following winning the Ultimate Fighter show. How did it finally feel to hit the big time, and uh, what what sort of part did the crowd play in the fight that night? Uh, obviously, finally to get into a main UFC card on the main card on television it was it was live, you know. Uh, it was just like a. It felt like a lifetime in the waiting, you know what I mean? I'd wanted it for so long, and then it finally was here. I just had fun with it, you know? And that's how I feel my career is going, that I've done all the hard work to finally get here. Now I'm working just as hard, but I'm enjoying it more because I'm where I want to be. So it was like a massive pressure relief, you know, of all the fights that I had before the UFC, trying to get to the UFC, and now I'm here. I'm having fun with it, you know? I'm enjoying it. I, I love every second of it. Being in the UFC, I love every setting of training and every getting ready for the next fight. And I, I don't know, I'm just happy in my life right now, and it's uh, it's just awesome feeling. And uh, I can't wait to get back in there and fight, obviously in three weeks. But uh, when I come out to the arena in uh, Manchester for the Riley fight, it was it was electric, man. I I just I've never experienced anything like it before. So. The UFC's held a, a fight in Newcastle before, not far from your hometown. Yeah. What do you think to the, the possibility of them returning to the North East and how would it feel for you to represent the UFC in front of your hometown crowd? Uh, you never know. I mean, the UFC's going all over the world now. It, uh, I mean, last time the, uh, the UFC come to Newcastle, uh, it, was a, it was an amazing night. Obviously, BG Japan, main event. It was, uh, it was a crazy atmosphere. It was... Uh, I don't see why they wouldn't come back again. I mean, the the, the place. I was, it was a uh, it was a great night. Uh, for me to fight there, it would be it would be unbelievable. You know, I mean, I think I'd be able to sell the place out just on my family ticket alone. Uh, so if they ever did come back, I would be I would love to be on their car there fighting there. I mean, I live literally ten minutes away from Newcastle Arena, so I don't know. It would be it would definitely be something to, one night to remember. I would love to be. To be a part of it. Okay, um, Dennis C. Going back to the Dennis Seaver fight, it's only the second fight of your career outside the UK. Is it any different fighting outside the the UK um, in a foreign country? Yeah, I don't see it. I mean, once you get in that cage and the cage door shuts and you're fighting, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be fighting in England. You could be fighting anywhere. A fight to fight. Uh, obviously. There's a little bit different with the with the flights and things like that, but that doesn't bother us as much. I mean, like getting a fight, I'm I'm there fighting. You know what I mean? It it doesn't matter to me where I am in the world. Okay, and and just finally, for for any fans that are new to MMA and haven't managed to see you fight yet, what can we expect for Ross Pearson when he fights at UFC Fight Night 21? Yeah, uh, fireworks. Uh, I always bring my style. I always uh, bring entertaining style to fight. Uh, I'm looking forward for a war, you know, uh, I think it's going to be an all-out dog fight, uh, I think it's going to be a war and it's got a fight and I've written all over it, so surely it'll be one for the fans to watch. Okay, have you got any sponsors or anything else you'd like to mention before we finish? Yeah, uh, I'd like to thank the sponsors, uh, Tokyo 5, Sprawl, Hayabusa, Fight Shop, My Protein, and Fight Mafia. Okay, good luck with your fight on uh, March 31st, Ross. Well, thanks.